All right, praise the Lord, Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center, giving you some good information here that will help you, assist you, and aid you in building out and being blessed and prospering in every dimension. You know, one of the greatest uh, examples of God's prowess and power and force and ability in a human being is David. And uh, I was reading some about David today in First Chronicles chapter 28, where it says that David summed all the officials of Israel to assemble at Jerusalem. And it talked about the officers over the tribes and commanders of the division in the service of the king commanders of the divisions in the service of the king. Look at that, divisions of the, in the service of the king. So he had, he had commanders over divisions that served, had, had served or were serving for the king. So a lot going on there in terms of aid, help, assisting David to make, solidify his kingdom. It says to the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, so there's just a lot of people involved here, thousands and hundreds, groups of people that were helping David to sustain and maintain his kingdom, you know. And God tells us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. See, in earth as it is in heaven, as it is above, so it is below. And um, he speaks about, God speaks about, it's his pleasure to give us the kingdom. So... In the kingdom, there's just a lot going on. Here in the natural kingdom, you have commanders of hundreds, the officials in charge, watch this, of all the property and livestock belonging to the king. All the property and livestock belonging to the king. So the king procured a lot under his uh, rule, rulership, under, under his auspices you know, prosperity and livestock belonging to the king and his sons together with the palace officials. So there are all kinds of officials and workers in the palace, which David lived in, and the warriors and all the brave fighting men. So look, look at all that's going on there with David. You know, you just think about David and him and his alone and, the, and him, you know, establishing divine order and having a kingdom and ruling, but forget about all that was under his tutelage. Hallelujah. And so he goes on to talk about in First Chronicles 28, David rose to his feet and said, listen to me, my fellow Israelites, my people. I had it in my heart to build a house as a palace of rest or a place of rest, a place of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, a place of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, for the footstool of our God. And, you know, establishing a place for God to set his feet. That's what the house of God is all about. And I made plans to build it. Actually, God gave him the plans to build. And God said to me, you are not to build a house for my name because you're a warrior and you have shed blood. Yet the Lord, the God of Israel, chose me from my whole family to be king over Israel forever. Forever. You hear that? You're in a position and place. You're in a forever anointing and appointing by the living God who chose Judah as his leader and from the tribe of Judah, he chose my family, and from my father's sons, he was pleased to make me king over all Israel. And uh, all of my sons, and the Lord has given me many, look at that, many sons, under David. He chose my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. There it is, the kingdom of the Lord. I love the kingdom of the Lord uh, over Israel. And he said to me, Solomon, your son is the one. 
who will build my house in my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish his kingdom forever if he is uh, unswavering in carrying out my commands and laws uh, as it is being done at this time. So David says, so now I charge you in the sight of all Israel and of the assembly of the Lord in the hearing of our God. So he says, God's listening to me as I pray. Be careful to follow all the commands of the Lord your God that you may possess this good land and pass it on as an inheritance to your descendants forever. So God wants us to come into possession of goods and services and he wants it to be a perpetual thing, a forever thing uh, involving an inheritance. So you're getting some of these key points here. Verse 9, as you, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father, as you, my son, acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind, and see, this is what I really want to get across to a lot of people that listen to my dissertation or listen to my uh, teaching, reaching and beseeching you to heed and to listen to what God has to say so that you can prosper in every way and receive everything that God has for you. This is something that we find is lacking in our day and age, especially, you know, in the house of God, um, serve him with wholehearted devotion, with a willing mind. Uh, so you say to pry and peel people to get them to church. Uh, they're not really wholehearted about their devotion to God, and, and they don't really have a willing mind for the Lord. And look what he says here, for the Lord searches every heart, and understands every desire and every thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. Look at that. If you seek him, he will be found by you. That Now, that's an underscore there. That is an absolute statement. David knew full well because he was a man for God's own heart. How to get a hold of God, seek him. If you seek him, He will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Forever is a, a long time, isn't it? <laughs> Consider now the Lord has chosen you to build a house as the sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. Be strong and do the work. And this, this is not for the lighthearted. This is not for the faint-hearted. This isn't for people who just are tickling their toes in the water. This is for somebody that is really sold out, committed and uh, totally uh, living for God. Be strong and do the work. Then David gave his son Solomon the plans for the portico, or the portico of the temple and its buildings, plural, its storerooms, plural, its upper parts, its inner rooms, and the place of atonement. See, in all of our building, we have to have in the middle of it all the place of God's atonement. We have to have a real comprehension of God's worthiness, God's holiness, and God's uh, sanctions. Uh, we have to have God in the middle of our plans. And here it, it spells it out in verse 12. He gave him the plans of of all that the Spirit had put in his mind. He gave him the plans of all that the Spirit had put in his mind for the courts of the temple of the Lord in all the surrounding rooms for the treasuries. Treasuries? What? Treasuries? You mean the men and women of God are allowed to have treasuries? Well, this is an abomination to the world, isn't it? An abomination to the system abomination to people while they're while they're insulted while they're while they're filled with contempt while people are so uh, pointing the finger because 
religion or God's people have something. Of course they do. For the treasuries of the temple of God. I mean, right in the house of God, treasuries. And for the treasuries of the dedicated things uh, that people have given from around the world. For he gave him instructions for the divisions of the priests and the Levites and for the work of serving in the temple of the Lord as well as for all the articles to be used in his in its service. There's a lot going on in the house of God for the work of serving in the temple. Um, for the priesthood and the Levites, instructions of the divisions of different sorts and how to... How to um, regulate and govern over the house of the Lord. It's not as easy as people think. Um, and so we get into some of the particulars about the wealth of the temple, of the sanctuary. He, 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 and this is all in design again by the Holy Spirit. He had given him the plans of all that the Spirit had put in his mind for the courts of the temple of the Lord and its surrounding rooms, for the treasuries of the temple of God and for the treasuries of the dedicated things. For he gave him instructions he did, for the division of the priests and the Levites and all of the work of serving in the temple of the Lord. And see, when you're sowing, you've you got to realize that as you're sowing into this ministry of Dallas Revival Center, there's a lot going on here. And there's a lot of order and there's a lot of uh, things that have to happen and, uh, and expenses are incurred. And when you give, give cheerfully because you're giving to maintain and sustain God's uh, fundamental framework that the Spirit has designed with uh, you in mind. For the work of the serving of the temple of the Lord, as well as for all the articles being used in its service, all the articles being used in its service. Now look what it says here. He des designed, he designated the weight of gold for all the gold articles to be used in various kinds of service, all the gold articles to be used in various kinds of service for the weight of silver, for all the silver articles to be used in various kinds of, of service for the weight of gold and for the gold lampstands and their lamps, with the weight of each lampstand and its lamps, the weight of silver for each silver lampstand and its lamps, according to the use of each lampstand, the weight of gold for each table for the consecrated bread, the weight of silver for the silver tables, the weight of pure gold for the forks and sprinkling bowls and pitchers and the weight of gold for each gold dish and the weight of silver for each silver dish and the weight of the refined gold for the altar of incense. He also gave him the plan for the chariots, that is the cherubim of gold that spread their wings and overshadowed the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Everything made of pure gold and silver. If you think that God can't afford. Listen, you got this thing backwards. You think that the uh, many think that the world is supposed to have everything, and they're supposed to be in charge, and they're supposed to have their weight in gold forever, whatever they do, and amass fortunes, while the church stays in punery and want and need, and barely can get along and barely get by. You got another thing coming, because the way this thing was set up, the church. The church possessed all of the wealth and the riches more than anybody can imagine. So you need to get your mindset different, differentiated and, and, and get, get your protocol uh, in a different format as you begin to sow and seed to the Lord and give to the Lord, knowing that, uh, you know, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I mean, you got to think about the generation of wealth that is being mandated to the church on every single level. And you need to know that the church is where God wants to pour out his blessing. And if you're connected to the part of the church that we're talking about, any type of uh, 
work in the church of your seed is is going into the house of God. You've got to know that you're going to be blessed beyond your imagination because the anointing is there. The force is there. The power is there. The prowess is there. The majesty is there. God's thoughts are there. God's genius is there. God's mind is there. God's operation is there. God's preparation is there. God's purpose is there. (laughs) Oh, my God, I'm going to shout the rafters down. And verse 19, and this David said, I have in writing as a result of the Lord in his hand on me, he enabled me to understand all the details of the plan and enabled me, he enabled me to know all the details of the plan. I'm telling you right now, as you sow, as you give into this ministry, Dallas Revival Center, God's plan for your life in detail is going to be specific and prolific as it is revealed to you in your personal life. And, of course, David gives this admonition. In verse 20, David said to Solomon and his son, Be strong and courageous and do the work. Be strong and courageous and do the work. It's going to take some extra measure, courage, uh, and power and strength to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you until all the work of the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. And see, there it is. There it is. So in verse 21, says, Division of the priests and the Levites are ready for all. It says, um, For the divisions of the priests and Levites are ready for all the work on the temple, and every willing person skilled in any craft will help in all of the work. See, I've got to get willing people in the house of God that are skilled, that are willing to build and to work in their craft, in their calling, to be able to pull all this together and for able to get you what you really need to have. Because you see, the God of all the universe is with you, it says here. He will not fail you nor forsake you until the work of the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. God's got a work for you. He's got a calling for you. He's in charge of your desire to be with Dallas Revival Center. He wants you to be faithful, loyal. He wants you to be in it with your whole heart and mind, sold out, synced in, and and, uh, really locked into his God design for your life so that everything can be fulfilled that he has called for. The officials and all the people will obey every command. See, the officials and the people will obey every command. So it's obedience better than sacrifice. So God's looking for obedience. He wants people to step up and do the work. There's work to be done. Everybody has talents, gifts, and and everybody has callings, uh, and they need to bring all that together. Nobody will do without. Nobody will be deficient. Nobody will uh, lack in any way. They will flourish in the courts of their God. They will flourish in the courts of their God. Well, listen, uh, I just had to get this out because, you know, we're seeing God move in a mighty way and his mighty design, but there are still a lot of things that have been left undone. People haven't made up their minds yet. If they really, really want to serve God and really, really want to have the blessing and really, really want to uh, see God do something, and do something in a forever way so that they'll have something when they go to heaven built for them and uh, established for them. Jesus said, I'm going, uh, I've got to go away and prepare a place or mansion for you. Uh, he wasn't talking to people that weren't working, people that weren't committed, people that weren't uh, in it all the way. He was talking to people that were disciples. You see what I mean? So there it is. God bless you. God's best. 
uh, read that chapter and see what you get out of it. Because I know I certainly got a lot out of the reading of First Chronicles chapter 28. Bye-bye for now. God bless you. God's best in the month of November. Amen. My birthday is November 6th. In Jesus' name, God bless you.